Hey there guys, welcome back to another online lecture for Organic Chemistry 2, part of the Chem Complete series. And we are moving forward today with our aromatic uh, directors. And in this case, we are going to be talking about the meta directors today. So when we have meta directors, we're really focused on electron withdrawing groups. And last time we talked about electron donating groups, which were ortho para directors and activators of the ring. So we're really going to be focused in this lesson on electron withdrawing groups, which will also be deactivators of the ring. Now, I do want to point out that if you have not gone and looked at that video, I would strongly encourage you to get a good grasp on the electron donating before you come to this video and look at the electron withdrawing. So we have an aromatic ring and when we talk about a director we're talking about something that's already on the ring that will direct the incoming group. So in this case we're talking about X being a meta director so it will direct some incoming group Y to the meta position instead of the ortho para position. Now in the last lesson we saw that when X is an electron donating group, it prefers to send things to the ortho para position because it picks up additional resonance, which is going to be very stabilizing to the intermediate form. So why are the electron withdrawing groups meta? That's one thing that we're gonna take a look at in this particular lesson, along with why they're deactivators. So let's make a list of our electron withdrawing groups. And some of these would include, but are not limited to, NO2, the nitro group, and SO3H, the sulfonyl group. When we take a look at these, um, I'll do the nitro. The structure for the nitro looks like this. Okay, so it is neutral as far as the charge goes because these formal charges cancel one another out. But if this group is directly attached to the ring... Okay, then you have something with a plus charge directly attached to the ring. This is going to look to withdraw electrons. Same thing would happen if I drew out the SO3H. So uh, some other common ones. Nitrile is going to be a common electron withdrawing group. Very common one. And then probably the most common out of the bunch that you're going to find are your carbonyl groups. And... If you remember, in the last lesson, we did show one that was an electron donating group that looked like this, okay? This specifically has the oxygen right here with lone pairs available attached to the ring, and that makes it an electron donating group. So don't get that confused. We're now talking about the carbonyl being directly attached to the ring. And in this case, we've got ketones, we've got aldehydes, we've got carboxylic as, uh, excuse me, carboxylic acids. I'm starting to merge my words there. We have esters, which was the other word I was going for. We have amides, right, etc. So, in other words, anytime I've got a carbonyl directly attached to the ring in position X here. It's going to be an electron withdrawing group. And that makes sense if I look at this because the carbonyl's general structure looks like this. Partial positive, partial negative with a dipole headed in this direction. So if this is attached to the ring, which I'll abbreviate as pH for phenyl, right? There's a general removal of electrons from the ring because the carbon wants electrons and the oxygen is stealing those electrons from the carbon. So we're removing electron property from the ring, right? And when we remove electron, oops, extra minus there, ignore that. When we remove electron property from the aromatic ring, the aromatic ring is looking to send out electrons to some sort of electrophile. And so when we're in this case, we're deactivating the ring, right? Because what I'm essentially doing here is I'm saying, okay, if I've got the ring, and the ring has sets of pi electrons available for bonding, I now put some group up here that is looking to withdraw or take electrons from the ring, right? So there's electrons that are sort of circulating throughout this ring. If this NO2 group is trying to suck the electron property up and remove it from the ring, that means the ring is not going to be as activated to go out 
and pick up or donate some electrons to an electrophile that's sitting out here in solution. And so for that reason, we refer to that list that I just made, all of the uh, electron withdrawing groups as D activators, right? And keep in mind that we did say in the previous lesson that the halogens, despite being ortho para directors, because they do have those lone pairs to offer up for resonance, they're going to be weak deactivators that are ortho para directors. Most of the electron withdrawing group is going to be a meta director, not an ortho para director. So those halogens are exceptions. They kind of have one foot in each camp. The deactivating is with the electron withdrawing by inductive effects. And the other half of it, they've got the lone pairs that are contributing to extra resonance. And that is in the electron donating, but it's really an ortho para directing argument. All right. So why are electron withdrawing groups meta directors? All right. So I'm going to stick with NO2. That's one of the the nice withdrawing groups I like to use in this set of lessons. So here's my electron withdrawing group, right? I've got a good EWG up here. We know it's going to deactivate the ring, but suppose that the ring has enough electron capacity to go out and pick up an E plus, right? In fact, I'll write this, let's write this as Y, because I think in the last lesson we were using Y plus where we had X up here. So we've got the nitro group, right? Electron withdrawing group. So I come and I pick up Y plus in solution. And this is going to be a meta director. Well, the first thing I want to show you is why this would not be, so this is not the case, why this would not be an ortho para director. Okay, so let's take a look at this. What if this were to ortho para direct? Why is that such a problem? Because if you remember, the electron donating group, we preferred ortho para because we got extra resonance stability out of it. So if I were to ortho para direct, I would send Y here and I would put my plus charge here, right? So I move my resonance along like I normally would. So that is going to place the charge para to the Y. Okay, that double bond moved over there. And here's my NO2 group up here. I still have a double bond up here. And then this double bond would come down to satisfy the plus charge and move the plus charge once again. So ortho para direction, which is what we're doing here, because notice the Y landed ortho, right? So this was ortho to the nitro group. We're always talking about it relative to the group that is already on the ring. And so if I move this bond down, I've got this here, and I've now placed the plus charge here, and I still have Y here. So you should notice there's a big problem with this, all right? Now, to help you sort of visualize this, I'm going to redraw this NO2. This NO2 would look like this when I have it present right here, right? So I've got my NO2 group, and I showed you that a few minutes ago. Look at what I've got here. I have a plus right next to another plus, right? These are adjacent to one another. This is not a stable situation. This is very unstable as far as the electronics go, as far as the resonance is concerned. This is very, very bad, okay? Because what is a plus really saying? It's saying I need electrons. And so you're putting two groups right next to one another in close proximity that are going to be combative or fighting over electron property. This is very, very bad, very unstable to put those two right next to one another. We try to limit charges in the first place, and we certainly are not looking to put common charges right next to one another like that. So that shuts down the ortho para pathway for the electron withdrawing groups, okay? For the electron donating groups, it's good. For the electron withdrawing groups, we don't get the extra resonance. In fact, we get a destabilizing resonance structure. So that's very bad. We want to shut that down. So you might be able to have a little foresight into why these are meta directors. So if I redraw this structure here 
and I put my same electron withdrawing group up here, I reach out for y plus, this time I'm going to take a look at meta direction. All right, and so we said when we have an electron donating group, meta direction is basically it's in the middle. It's kind of I don't want to say disfavored, but it's not as favorable as having the extra resonance stability. So we tend to go with the path of ortho para direction. Now, let's take a look at this. In this case, meta is actually going to be better when we have the electron withdrawing group. So the electron withdrawing group is a meta director. So Y goes there, the plus charge goes here, right? And what's gonna happen is that as I move this over, remember with the electron donating group, I said, oh, well then I miss the electron donator. I don't put the plus right underneath the electron donator that can form that extra resonance stability. Well, here I'm looking to avoid the plus being present right underneath the electron withdrawing group. So now, if I meta direct, I skip over the NO2 instead of placing the plus right under the NO2, right? And then I could also move this up here. So the key here is not so much that meta direction gives an extra benefit, it's that the ortho para direction is so strongly disfavored because of that problematic buildup of charge that occurs right here, right? So just as a reminder, we've got the NO2. There's really a plus on that NO, and then the top carbon, if I ortho para direct, is going to take that plus charge on, right? And that is problematic. We cannot have that. So the meta setup is ideal for an electron withdrawing group because I skip over that NO2 position and I keep the plus away from the electron withdrawing group and I avoid this situation right here, this destabilizing situation that I don't want. And so that is why the electron withdrawing groups are meta directors instead of ortho para directors. It's also, as we spoke of earlier, why they deactivate the ring. Because when I have these groups that have charges, right, or at least partial charges, they pull electron property up out of the ring which is going to deactivate the ring from sending electrons out to something else. And so that really covers the meta directors and the deactivators versus the ortho para directors and the activators. Very, very important because we're going to proceed here with some organic synthesis. We're going to learn how to add halogens to the ring, how to add nitros to the ring, how to add carbon groups to the ring. And if you want to add multiple groups, I know I mentioned this at the end of the last video, if you want to add multiple groups, you need to think about it ahead of time and say, I'd rather activate my ring first instead of deactivate it, if possible. And more importantly, I need to consider my directors. So what do I mean when I say consider my directors, right? Let's take a look at this. If I had benzene and I said to you, right, you're in class and I said, all right, well, what I'd like to create is the following compound. I want the aromatic ring. I'd like OH and a para NO2, right? Well, what you know at this point, we don't know the specific reactions that are going to provide these groups. But what you do know is that a nitro would meta direct the alcohol if I attempted to put that on second. However, the alcohol as an electron donating group is going to ortho para direct the nitro, right? So there's two different pathways here. And the way that we can look at this is, okay, pathway one, I'm going to add the OH to the ring first. And again, we will talk about the specific reactions in the synthesis portion of this. So let's say that I add the OH, right? The OH is an ortho para director so then if I decide I want to add the NO2 to the ring, the OH will ortho para direct, so para position for the NO2 is acceptable here, right? Now there's another pathway. What if I decided to add the nitro group first? Well, this activated the ring along with being an ortho para director. Adding the nitro group is going to deactivate the ring so, right, I add the nitro group first. So I'm going to deactivate the ring at this step. And this is also a meta director. So the next step, if I want to add OH to the ring, 
the OH is going to be added meta to the nitro group, right? So nitro groups are meta directors, so OH would end up here instead of para, and it would be more difficult to add the OH than the initial nitro because I've deactivated the ring. So this is not the correct order. This is the correct order. I would want to, basically when I'm doing this, number one would be to add the OH group. Number two would be to add the NO2 group. And that's why this is important. That's why it's like, okay, who cares? Meta direction, ortho para direction, activator, deactivator, because the order in which you add this stuff matters. You're going to get different isomers and you're going to get different compounds coming out of these reactions if you're not careful to select the proper reagents at the proper time. Okay, so that is going to finish up the ortho para versus meta direction. We're actually going to jump into some synthesis when we take a look at the next video. Um, I hope that you guys found this helpful. And please remember to like, comment if you have any questions, and subscribe. It does, does me a big favor when you subscribe. Um, please go ahead and subscribe if you're interested in keeping up with the videos, keeping up with the content that I'm releasing. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them. I will get back to you guys as soon as possible. Otherwise, I hope you have a good rest of the day, and I will see you guys for the next lesson. Thanks for learning with me.